it's not very often that a camera comes along and shakes up the video production industry. Last year, that was the Ronin 4D for me. And here we are 365 days later, and DJI is saying that the Ronin 4D is not dead and it is ever evolving. So last video we talked about the past, but now let's see what the future of the Ronin 4D looks like. What's going on guys? Today is a very special day for me because this is the birth of a new Ronin 4D. This now shares a place in my heart very close to the Sony Venice with its Rialto package. This thing is further separating itself from the competition and continuing to create a unique experience for a solo filmmaker. Now, originally, my next video wasn't gonna be another video on the Ronin 4D, but DJI reached out to me and said they would love to make a part two to my one year review and yeah, this is a huge asterisk to everything that I said in the last video and it has been a dream working with this. So I wanna take this video, talk about how I've been using this thing in my productions and my commercial work in my weddings and what the future of this camera looks like for me with this, with this crazy new setup it has. DJI is here and saying that not only is the Ronin 4D alive, but it's just getting started and I I've always been very hopeful of this ecosystem and the potential it has, having so many detachable parts, you know, removing the gimbal. And this is just, you know, proving the theories right and really showcasing the flexibility of the Ronin 4D. Okay, so what do we have here? This is the Ronin 4D Flex. The Flex is essentially being able to separate the gimbal portion of the camera from the <laughs> camera portion of the camera but this thing is kind of incredible when it comes to a hands-on experience because it takes this 13 pound camera that I carry around with me for hours and hours and it turns it into a much better user experience I'm able to separate this now put the weight of this camera on my back using the tilt to float and have all of the controls of the 4d right here in my hand keeping the grips, keeping the monitor, and just using a setup that is literally half the weight. Yeah, we're, we're definitely gonna talk about it. So what I've been doing is I've been using this thing a lot. I've been using this thing for commercials. I've been using this thing for weddings. I have been just cramming as much film time into this package as possible prepping for this review because I tend not to do short form reviews. I love to get my hands on stuff, but Initial impressions of this is if you are looking to expand your experience with the Ronin 4D and you're looking to kind of get that lightweight package feel, then this is probably going to be what's for you. But if you wanna learn from the experience that I've had over the last few weeks, then let's get into it. Having this system changes a lot for me because it lets me have a lot more flexibility with the shots that I wanna create. If I wanna get low, I can get low with ease at this point. If I wanna separate this thing, tripod it, monopod it, get some incredible jib shots or film in very, very tight places, the flex is there for that. And this is just making a already great camera really, really, really good because the image quality that this thing produces, the file formats that it has, we've talked about this last video, they are all phenomenal, but it's just a scary camera to own because you don't know if it's going to keep going. But the flex kind of proves that for me. It shows me that DJI is focusing more on this camera. They are trying to nail down professional grade cameras. And even though this is their first attempt, this is a crazy, crazy good attempt so far. So when it comes to a cinematographer's future, this is kind of a unique setup because they are making very, very, very complex things very easy. Because when I started filming before I got the 4D, I needed something for the wireless transmitter, I needed batteries for the transmitter, I needed onboard monitoring, I needed offboard monitoring, top handles, everything that this thing just has was separate. And that was why I got it. It was to create a unique experience in one and 
it's been doing that a lot and it is even pushing that further beyond with the flex and the new zoom lens that they have. And speaking of the zoom lens, let's talk about it. This is the new DJI 17-28 T 3.0. This is a very unique lens. It completes the wide angle aspect of the native DJI lenses that they have. And personally, I'm gonna speak to the heart real quick. I hate zoom lenses. Um, I don't really like them at all because they feel a little cumbersome sometime and I just feel like I have a prime that can do it better every single time. The difference with this thing is still a zoom lens, but it's a wide angle zoom lens. Wide angle zoom lenses are just better for me. I don't know why I can't put my finger on it just quite, but it feels like a tool to recompose my shots rather than trying to zoom in and zoom out. Like this feels very, very handy and it is super handy because the controls to recompose my shots are built into the handle. So I don't have to reach up to my lens, you know, zoom, mess up my frame, you know, hit something on a tripod and everything is built into the 4D. So it comes second nature now. So if I wanna, you know, focus, 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 or if I'm like, ooh, I wanna zoom in a little bit to recompose this landscape shot, I have the ability to do that and it's just an all-in-one package and it continues to be an incredible experience for the user and I really, really do like things that make stuff convenient for the buyer. Now, this impressive little lens provides a better image quality experience than the 16-35 Sony F4, but it's priced much better than the G Master. This is a T3.0, so it's basically an F2.8 and having something this small this wide and full frame coverage on a package like this is really unique and it really does help add to the lightweight experience that the flex is giving this overall package because if it was one thing that was missing from the 40 experience and i talked about this in the last video it was this thing is heavy and I need to be compensating for it. So overall, when it comes to the Ronin 4D, if you're looking at native lenses, this is probably going to be the one that you want to go for unless you're needing something that's a bit more zoomed in because this thing was built with the Ronin 4D in mind. That means there's no rebalancing when you zoom in and out. There is no calibration and it's overall just a seamless experience. Okay, so now past the introductions, let's talk about how I actually plan on using this thing and how the experience of using this thing has helped my commercial productions and if it's even worth it for you to look into for the things that you shoot, because this may not be for everyone. This seems to be a very unique thing, but man, is it definitely a one of a kind experience that I've really liked because I've always had my eyes on the Sony Venice and the Rialto system. And this is getting me like one step closer to that for pff, like a fifth the price. <laughs> With the introduction of the Flex, this completes the solo experience for me. I was talking last week and mentioning how much of a solo operator's camera that this camera is. This is for people who, you know, you want to get a lot of stuff in a single package and you don't want to have multiple pieces. You don't have a lot of people on set. This is a all in one production rig and Having the ability to add the flex just makes that so much easier. So most of the things I do are, you know, six to eight hour film days. If I'm running and gunning with this filming B-roll or if I'm setting this up on a tripod or if I'm filming commercial productions where we're doing, you know, stagnant shots or story driven B-roll shots, I'm usually just two grips hand holding the Ronin 4D and <laughs> it gets heavy. It gets really, really, really heavy. So extending this out with the flex for somebody like me, it has been a great experience. And personally, this is going to make commercial work a lot easier for me. What's even funny is that the introduction of the flex makes my tilt of float better because now if you want to get a tilt to float, all you need is the back brace, which means you don't have to get a tilt to float. You can get any kind of back braced camera mount. You can mount this thing to the back of it and you have a really neat and portable system. Super effective for the image quality that it gets and crazy convenient because when I think about systems like this, I think about the movie Top Gun Maverick where they were in the cockpit and they could not fit the Venice in the cockpit. This kind of system is perfect for situations like that. And I find myself in situations where I'm like, I just wish I had a little more room sometimes, or 
I wish this was a lot less heavy and more convenient. This thing is great. Speaking of convenience, real quick, little side note, I wish, and I'll get to, I'll get to the, the gripes later, but I do wish that this cable disconnected somehow. I wish it was plugged in. So DJI, if you're listening again, which is a really weird thought, but if you're listening, if this can be detachable, please, because I would love to take this apart, sit it down somewhere and keep the camera on my back. But right now it's a six foot cable. It's just long enough. Like it could be a hair longer, but it's just long enough for me as a six foot three person to work with this camera and sit it down, but not walk too far away. <laughs> so it's really scary to use because I feel like I'm going to jank a cord the wrong way and knock my camera off the table. But yeah, if it could just be a little detachable, that would be great. So how will this camera impact the shoots that I do? Well, this is probably going to be my go-to choice for setup. There is a huge downside though. <laughs> it's not huge, but the case that this thing comes with is this. The Ronin 4D comes with this awesome case and the Ronin 4D, you know, fits together in that case perfectly. But the moment you separate the 4D, I now need to figure out how I'm going to store this thing. And that's a problem I haven't figured out yet because I'm probably gonna have to custom cut a Pelican case. So that is something you wanna keep in mind because right now I'm just been kinda throwing this thing together in a backpack and this is a very expensive camera to keep loose in a bag and I can't feel comfortable with that at all. So if you're looking at a system like this, just know that the cases that you have will probably not work anymore. And if you do want your case to work, then you can separately store the flex system and keep your Ronin 4D together how it normally is. But for what I'm doing, I think this is the number one configuration that I'll be going with. And the number two configuration will be together like it originally is, which means I need to figure out how to store this thing. And that is not the most convenient thing. But when it comes to operating and working with the flex system, this thing is crazy easy to work with. I know I talk about how awesome it is to have a detachable lens mount. Well, this is the exact same way. There's something satisfying about it, but this thing has a lock and you just twist. And here is the thing that you pretty much pay for. This is a crazy versatile system. And I really do like having a modular and versatile system because in the future, when an AK comes out, maybe you'll be able to just buy this one day and just have an 8K system. I don't know, it's just a thought, but I like how prepared for the future this camera feels. Like they have the versatility to be able to add anything. And my big hope <laughs> is that we're gonna take this, we're gonna put this upside down, and this is gonna be on the latest drone because I would love to see a universal system where I've invested in a Ronin 4D and that Ronin 4D can now work with the drones I have. It can work with the car mounts I have. It can work with the gimbals and things I have simply because DJI has prepared for the future and they've made a very versatile camera. I do hope a lot of other companies lean towards that versatile nature of camera because I love a modular system. I love things that I can build out and I love all in one packages that kind of just work for the user. And this is a great start. So I like the fact that this is getting further and further away from a gimmick and more into something that's actually usable, actually feasible, and something that makes me really, really excited about what's to come. When it comes to the zoom lens, I am really excited to have something that is versatile in that nature, as in recomposing my shots, something I don't really have to think about too much. And T3 is great. I am not a fan of like super high f-stop lenses. So 2.8 or a T3 is like the top part of the kit for me. I usually hate f4 lenses. I don't feel like they're worth it too often, but Having something that is, you know, T3.0, having something that is this wide is going to be really nice and refreshing because this helps me rethink my composition of shots. And I have the ability to explore composition of shots because this thing is super light and awesome. So what does this mean for the relationship of the work that I do with this camera? Interesting enough, this camera keeps becoming the right choice for me. I took an incredible risk getting this camera for a problem that I did not have anymore. I thought I was gonna be using this thing to film car commercials constantly, 
And I find myself using this thing for everything but that. And I love that this is slowly becoming something that fits more and more into my workflow. And it's really nice and refreshing. But for you, this is going to be a tough call because if you have a Ronin 4D, this is something extra. And in something that is already very, very expensive, if you have it and you believe that the Ronin 4D is perfect and is good enough and you love the fourth axis stabilization, then this may not be the system for you. If you are somebody like me and you prefer the versatile nature and the lightweight nature and the convenience that having the flex system gives you, then this is probably going to be something worth looking at. But truthfully, at this point, you probably already know if the flex is right for you because I want it. Oh man, I want it to have this experience from jump and it was always talked about and speculated on, but Things like this take time and I'm very happy that this camera is continuing to grow and continuing to evolve because I'm really, really excited to see what evolution comes next. And it's just something that is very reassuring to see that DJI is not necessarily throwing this camera on the back burner and going for something completely different because as I said last video, this camera was a risk. And it is a risk that a lot of people don't want to take, but it's becoming more and more worth it because this camera is slowly, it's just slowly becoming my favorite camera. <laughs> and that is a crazy thought. Before we exit out of this video, I do want to touch on some of the negatives that I have found while testing this thing. As I said earlier, the cable is kind of short and I am a tall boy <laughs> and I wish this thing was a hair longer. I wish it was detachable. I wish there was a really convenient option to store this thing, such as a storage bag or, you know, something because this is a lot of equipment to just kind of have loose around. But those negatives are really, really niche. Like there's something that you're going to experience because you're getting new gear and you're fitting it into a into your lifestyle and you're having to store that gear. And if figuring out how to store my gear is the worst part of new tech, then like we hardly have a problem at all, do we? But overall, this looks like an amazing system and I would definitely look into it. I don't know how rentals would be, but do your research. If this is something that you want to explore, if you want to see more stuff on the Ronin 40 and how I am using it on my everyday shoots, then I would love to make that content for you. But for now, this camera is an overall incredible experience. It is something that once again, just keeps evolving, keeps figuring out new ways to impress me. And I am genuinely excited for the future of the 4D and very, very excited to see how this thing may be compatible with each and every other device DJI makes in the future. But with that all being said, that's all I have for you today, guys. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, consider subscribing because I'm bringing you more content just like this every week. So you guys stay safe, you're loved, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.